Welcome back to the Pitch Pod, everyone. I'm your host, Jeff Stebbins. If you're here looking for soccer talk, you're in the right place. And I am joined, as always, with my trusty co-host, Joe Janner. Joe, how are you doing this evening? Hi, Jeff. I'm doing well, getting over a little bit of a cold spell, but I think that uh, turned the corner and I'm feeling better and always happy to be here on the Pitch Pod. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. What's what do you got on there? Is it a jersey of some type? Oh yeah, the, the, the pitch pod here, and it's, you know, customized. You know what? You didn't get yours. You know what, Joe? I never leave home without it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I thought you were on the team, man. I thought for sure I didn't have to call <laughs> your agent. And well, and, I know and, that I, you're the number ten. So we have to have a number nine, right? Fair enough. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's fitting for the that's fitting for the dynamic on the pitch pot. So excellent. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, think so. I think so. You lay it up and I put it in the back of the net. I think that's I think that's the, the relationship here. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, Joe and I we're running this deal. We do have pitch pod merch, the pitch pod jerseys, and whoever has the best comment out there on our videos in the future. Joe and I will discuss, pick out the best comments, the most creative, the most humorous, just the best in general comment. And on us, on the Pitch Pod, Pitch Pod credit card, we have a jersey specialized with your last name on it coming your way. Well, that's an exciting promotion, Jeff. I'm really looking forward to see what kind of comments we get from this. Hopefully they, they've been long-term fans and they kind of get the gist of the the script or they're on brand if you will but well I'm, I'm looking forward to see what kind of comments we get from some of those that have been viewing quietly without much uh additional commentary but we're looking for the comments right jeff that's what we're after we need some more commentary that that's what we're after long term new term this competition's for anyone, anyone okay involved, right um and they're pretty snazzy looking i think joe what do you think oh yeah it's great it's great <laughs> so anyways yeah, welcome back to the Pitch Pod, another episode. Uh, we had a pretty exciting match that, uh, you know, neither of us hit right on the money. No ring dingers today. However, Joe was pretty close. Uh, he did predict the right winner uh, and was just one goal off the correct score. So, Joe, can you kind of take us through that game from uh, that we uh, previously reviewed? Yes, yeah, so the fourth round FA Cup game between – Arsenal Manchester City really thought that the scoreline was pretty close, rather indicative of what we saw in that match in the sense that maybe even there could have been more goals, though, namely from Manchester City. And I think it's probably worth even mentioning, could have uh, could Holland have showed up and, and scored an additional goal? I think he had a couple chances. But at the end, that scoreline, I think, is pretty clear aligned with the performance that we witnessed in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't necessarily expecting that outcome. I'm not super surprised by it. Like you said, Holland did have some opportunities as we discussed. I, I would, as I mentioned, I was pretty impressed with his attempt at the bicycle. Obviously it didn't work out, but it was a good attempt, creative play on his part. And he, he was in the mix a couple times, had some opportunities but I believe I remember one podcast host out there that kind of questioned some of these goals and legitimacy of, you know, the competition that we were getting all these goals from, be it with Eric Collin, um, how many were PKs. So I did notice, Joe, Holland didn't have a goal in this, uh, in this match. And it seems like the previous matches was strong competition. He didn't have a goal in those matches either, Joe. What what exactly do you have to say about that? I mean, you can't ever say could have, should have, would have had it not been for this, that, or whatever in this game that we're talking about here. I think, though, what has to be said or what has to be mentioned is it's still the influence of this man being on the field and this performer and what he does and how the opposition has to react. I think that's the key word, how the opposition has to react to him and what he does. 
and thus opening up opportunities elsewhere for other players in other situations to be that person to score goals. Yes, I know. Again, it's a team contest. It's a team game. And then we're talking about the individual performance and goals. And we've talked about multiple times on the pitch pod that that's what this game is about, scoring goals. So, no, he did not score a goal, but I still think his influence helped Manchester City get the result, get the win in this game. I understand. And, and to, a, to a degree, I'm just having fun. I know Joe likes Holland, so I'm just kind of poking him a little bit. Uh, I do like Holland as well. If, if I had a team, of course, I'd want him up top. Um, but again, going back to those stats and how reliable are they, you know, I, I do want to point out that, you know, on a lot of those goals, he's being set up by his teammates that are also excellent, be it De Bruyne, be it Morez. So when I do see him score, it's usually not him doing some messy magic and, and, you know, making this play out of nowhere. He's usually being set up pretty well. So yeah, it's, it's, He's a great contributor, but as you said, it's the team. And and Man City's a solid team. In fact, uh, you were just telling me pre-show, Joe, that you think they're actually better than where they're ranked. Is that correct? I think you have to look at it like that. Especially, again, probably more so than anything from this specific contest is what you saw as the Manchester City club that has personnel that far exceeds what an Arsenal has when what they have to work with. The, the depth, if, if you will, or the lack of depth of an Arsenal side is was pretty much fully exposed in this type of contest. And I think alluded to it or talked about it early on in the uh, previous episode, is this being, or questioning, is it more or less a dress rehearsal for what we're going to see going into league play? Keep in mind, there's still two more fixtures featuring these two in league play. One not too far down the road, and then again, they'll, they'll see itself in the reverse later. Could those be pivotal or important matches? If City then shows up and wins those two, how does that change the whole complexion of the table aside from what they have to do with the rest of their contest and what they, and what, again, obviously what Arsenal need to do to finish it out being still ahead top of the table. But I still think Manchester city talent wise, and I may, I don't think that's too far off from any other opinions that you'd hear most people talk about talent wise. And again, as long as Pep Guardiola is in charge there, they're always going to be the team to beat. And so while the results and the numbers aren't quite there right now, there's still plenty to play for the season Lots that could happen between now and the end of the contest. <clears throat> yeah, no, I agree. I, I think they're capable of a lot more than what they've been showing. And legendary coach, as you mentioned. Um, so, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, you know, I don't I wouldn't automatically say they're that much better than Man U or Arsenal at this point. But I understand that from a talent perspective. They're loaded up. I, I hear you there loud and clear. Um, looking ahead for this, and, and as you said, going back to league play, we have a pretty exciting league game coming up. I believe it is going to be Tottenham Spurs, who are currently ranked number five, versus Man City, Holland, who's currently ranked number two in the league and coming off a FA Cup victory over the number one ranked team, Arsenal. So, um, I know, Joe, I know you look at the analytics as I do. Um, and right now they have Man City with a 55%. If it, Some of them range, but I saw 51 to 55% likelihood of winning. And they're giving um, the Spurs only, in, it's in the low 20s. I think it was 22% last time I checked. So a lot of people, even though it's a home game for the Spurs, are giving the advantage to man city probably because of their talent pool as you suggested so joe what are some initial thoughts going into this game i think mostly you mentioned it with the spurs then it's in fifth in the respective position maybe have lost a couple few more games than many would have expected or some results didn't quite go their way to put them in the spot but they they have a means a way to set themselves up to compete against Manchester City. I think they have the personnel. I think they have the manager. They have the the system in such a way that we know that they're going to be okay. They're, again, they're going to fall into the classification of a team that's going to be okay with Manchester City with the ball and, and being able to set up and be able to defend and be able to transition to counterattack quickly. I think that's their game plan. I think they've been playing in that manner in such a way for a while. And I think they're just a team with the personnel to do so. 
I think it'd be really interesting to see again what, what what's going on in training. Are they, how they are they planning for specific instances to identify moments where maybe Manchester City has players overcommitted into the attack numbers wise and can get them back from behind in the counter. So I really am interested to see if that's how they go about it. Again, even in a home game, I think we talked about this in a match before. Even them hosting, being okay with the visiting side in Manchester City possessing the ball and in some sense almost testing to see where they are so again early on is it the first 15 minutes kind of just trying to see I mean let's not forget about Sun really kind of now kind of turned the corner I know he's had not nearly the numbers as, as recent past and Kane there who's just second behind Holland in terms of goal scorers so they have the means to, to get the goal they need is it going to be a situation where again they sit back just enough to nick the one goal go up or I mean again that's what's so difficult about this one is how does Manchester City not score Right. I, I don't know how often we have looked at contests where Manchester City hasn't scored in a game to say that they won't score. Spurs have the one go. So, I mean, I know we, we haven't got to. I don't know if we were ready to get to the predictions, but I kind of have an idea with that set being said where this could go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, myself included there. Yeah. It's I think it's going to be a close game. I do. And I do expect that Pep's going to have Man City pressuring uh, a good majority of the game, as they do. And that could lead to some turnovers. That could be crucial. Um, although Man City's been turning it over quite a bit, too. Kane is a factor. You mentioned Kane, the number two goal scorer in the league. And I believe if he scores this game, it's actually his 200th Premier League goal. So that'd be uh, quite the achievement for Kane. And Coming off a kind of a sour World Cup ending for him, I, I do hope he gets it. Um, I think I, th I think that'd be good for him and his play, his confidence. But yeah, I think for me, as as I look at this game, it's going to depend on right. We know that the Spurs can compete for the first forty five minutes. The question is, are they going to be able to compete for the last 45 minutes and that's, that's a good point kind of, that's a good point right yeah there. that's been kind of their thing right mm -hmm. this season and that includes the last time that they ended up playing man city they were mm -hmm. ahead at half two nil and they let it fall apart so i think it's going to depend on that are they going to play this the whole game through um as they should be able to and i also think it's going to come down to possession and of course it comes down to possession in a lot of games but I, I think whatever team's going to turn over the ball the most is is going to be the team that is um, at risk of losing, and um, it's it's going to be a good game. There's definitely going to be some goals. I have a feeling. What, what about you, Joe? Well, I think just to really to go piggyback on the point about the possession. I think what's going to be interesting if it goes along with what I suggested, where more so Manchester City in possession, Spurs sitting back, ready to counterattack. It's those moments when they do pressure to win the ball, take it from Manchester City. Can they find it, their target? Player? Can they get the ball? Can they connect multiple passes to then do that transition? Or is it going to be them just always falling back, always dropping back? I think that's going to be a big part of it. Manchester City going to dominate in possession. So that it's going to be up to Spurs to really utilize, or, you know, really make sure that they are on top of when they do win the ball, that they're still able to be productive in the possession themselves, namely to spring a quick counterattack. As far as goal scoring, I think I almost have to write the script on this one, Jed. I think for me, Kane scores, as you suggested. And guess who else is going to score? Holland for Manchester City. This is a 1-1 draw, Jeff. All right. that's That sounds good. I, I think you're right. I think Kane scores. It might even come from a PK. Uh, I think that Holland scores. And I can see that coming from a PK as well. But I don't think it's going to end at 1-1. I, I just don't think we're going to see that. I think it will be a draw. And I'm going to say it's going to be a draw 2-2. Two two. Okay, that's that's exciting. I, I don't know if we had a time where we both picked a team to draw and then had just a little bit different on results. So that's that, either way, I think it's going to be a great, exciting match to get into. I think a lot of folks would be excited to see how this turns out. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is our first draw, uh, double draw here on the pitch pod. I think that's accurate. Um, and I just want to, you know, just reclare. I just want to clarify. I I see Holland scoring one goal, not two, <laughs> not three, not four, not five. 
<laughs> one goal possibly from a PK. That is oh, possibly from a PK. Okay. All right. So, so, you know, I don't expect to see a, a hat trick against the Spurs. I, I don't, I don't expect to see that. Right. Nottingham Forest, probably. Right. Okay. But, I, 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 I'm, I'm picking up what you're laying down there since I, it's still on pace, right? Are we, we're still talking about goals and record scoring or he's still on pace to break the record of getting the one in a contest like this would be good for where he's doing. And then, as you suggested, against lesser opponents, not necessarily knock on Nottingham Forest or any other clubs that aren't in the top spots at this time. Yeah, he could score multiple goals against them to continue. So I, I think, yeah, it's okay. So at least, hey, we're in agreement on that one. He scores one. Yeah. Oh, good. There good for go. the spot. There, yeah, there we go. go. We're in agreement. All right. <laughs> well, Joe, uh, thanks for joining us also. And uh, again, don't forget, leave a comment. We, we, we will be going through that and, and seeing, looking for the most creative, most humorous, whatever you got. We're looking for the best overall comment. And you have one of these sweet babies coming to you in the mail, courtesy of the Pitch Pod corporate credit card. So that's something to look forward to. As always, thank you for joining us. And please like, subscribe, and as always, keep pitching out there, everybody. In a game, the round ball, round posts, anything can happen.